Jack here. Let's see if we can do a few tips and tricks related to shooting with Lightroom Mobile's camera. That's going to allow us to shoot RAW even on an older device that doesn't support the Apple Pro RAW new file format that came in with the um, iPhone 12 Pros. So here we are with the native camera. I'm going to swap it over to Lightroom. And we're going to start off with the auto mode and specifically what we're going to be talking about is this challenging mode of shooting in infrared so i'm going to take the infrared filter you can see how dark it is that's what we need to photograph through to create a good exposure let me screw this on we're taking advantage of the uh, moon dog uh, filter adapter on a moment case that's allowing us to screw that on there and that's what we're getting that's our default setting which you can see is already pretty great and we're already getting uh, a significant amount of detail in the file and this is if we look down in the lower left hand corner this is the auto setting out of our options here within Lightroom for shooting auto professional high dynamic range long exposure and depth capture um, those last two are uh, new and we'll have to turn on those options so we'll show you how to do that later but for now auto is our default setting um, it is uh, great except when it comes to things like infrared because it doesn't let us set our white balance we're not getting the uh, full capabilities of being able to preview our image in um, the most accurate color it's the same problem that we have with the uh, native camera on the iPhone as well but if we were to shoot on that we can tap in the screen and that's going to set the exposure for us wherever we tap um, if we want to change the exposure while we're in this auto mode it's swiping left to right not up and down and you can see the numeric value of the exposure compensation above I would recommend that same thing of overexposing uh, the raw files there you can see right now there's no way we're blowing out any highlight detail in this file even though we're a full stop over and uh, as you probably know most of the information in a digital file a digital raw file is in the highlights not in the midtones or shadows so the last thing you want to do is purposely underexpose everything uh, just in case you may clip a highlight you really don't want to do that don't get in that habit so in this case, knowing I've got the dynamic range, and this is specific to shooting infrared, the full stop over is fine. Um, you'll see the three dots in the upper right hand corner. That's gonna allow us to turn on things like that timer. So that's what I've turned on to two seconds. I am on a tripod, you can see, because I don't have this uh, deep fusion and smart HDR that's built into the native camera on the iPhone, I really want to take advantage of um, making this as stable as possible. So when you're shooting under these challenging situations like night or infrared and you don't have the ability to shoot uh, this new um, Apple Pro RAW on the new 12s um, and you don't have the night mode even going back to the iPhone 11 or the regular 12s on the iPhone, if you don't have that night mode then a tripod certainly comes in handy. So with that um, going, I can just tap the two, one, two, boom, I've taken a single exposure. Let's jump over to where I really think you should be shooting. And that is, well, we'll show you a professional just because of where it's at. You can see down at the bottom, we can set that exposure compensation to whatever you want, three stops up or down. Um, you can set your ISO and your seconds of your exposure. In this case, because we have the movement of the palm fronds, uh, I'm going to leave that to um, auto. Um, it's going to, based upon the um, angle of the lens, it knows what it needs in order to take a uh, sharp shot. So uh, I'm going to let it do that. If I knew, let's say for an example, that I needed it looking up at the top, that I needed at least a 30th of a second in order to get a um, a, a stable shot um, not of the subject matter but it, because of my own hand um, then I can set that as well you'll notice though looking down at the bottom my ISO to do 
a full stop over at a 30th of a second, I'm now at over 3000 for my ISO. So that's where we're starting to get in noise. And this is also why I'm typically not gonna use this pro mode. I wanna show it to you because it's a standard and for most of your color work, it'll be fine. Um, I am gonna go jump over to the white balance and at the far right, you see the little eyedropper, affectionately known as the turkey baster. Click on that. You point at an area that you want to be neutral, in this case, the greens in the file, tap the shutter, and I've now set a custom white balance. This is a more standard sepia uh, infrared shot, which I really, really love. So here, uh, I, like I said, I'm gonna set my seconds back to auto. I'm gonna do the uh, second over, and I'm gonna press the shutter and take another shot. We will compare these later on. The uh, mode that I'm gonna recommend mostly is gonna be this high dynamic range. HDR, in the case of Lightroom, is really actually very, very intelligent um, in the sense that it uh, will shoot your typical uh, three stops bracketed exposure, what is traditionally metered, a full stop under and a full stop over, but it combines those and it keeps them in a raw file format, not like your standard DSLR that now if you go into HDR mode is going to um, convert the file into a JPEG. It'll keep the raw file separate so you can combine them in something like Lightroom, but you will not get a raw combined HDR. You will in this app, Lightroom Mobile. It is smart enough to keep the raw aspects of the three combined um, exposures, uh, much as if it had, was doing it from scratch inside of Lightroom, where it also takes three raw files and leaves you with a raw HDR file. So uh, one, I like it because of that, you've got the extended dynamic range, but two, it also does what's known as de-ghosting. In other words, it compares the movement between these three exposures and will automatically try and compensate. So that way you are more likely to get a sharp file. That de-ghosting automatic is pretty darn cool. So I've got my exposure set to a full stop over. My white balance has kept that auto white balance, again, where I could click on it and say, yes, thank you very much. Uh, my focus, I'm gonna leave it as auto, which is that next one there. And again, I'm gonna press the shutter and there I have my three shot um, HDR uh, file. These uh, other two of long exposure and depth capture, they are what are known as technology previews. If we come in here to our um, settings, technology previews at the bottom. This is where you can turn on long exposure and depth map support. It will not do a portrait mode, it won't blur the background, but it will make a depth map that you can use um, actually in your targeted adjustments. It's actually pretty darn cool, but uh, that would be another class. The long exposure is similar to the live photo feature within the native camera on the iPhone where it's shooting multiple, multiple images, trying to align them as best as possible, giving you the impression of a long exposure, but uh, without the limitation of say, it just being too bright and you don't have a neutral density filter. So the long exposure is cool. It does leave you with a raw file, but I do not find it as good as the HDR. But that's where you can turn it on and so you can play with them. And um, there you go. There are our shots. We will go through those when we get into um, editing. But here is our latest HDR file. Even with the movement, you can see we ended up with razor sharp um, leaves and a great exposure with that one second over. Okay, a few tips on Lightroom Mobile shooting, specifically playing with infrared.